Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first meeting of the year for the Beaver Creek City Council. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And tonight we also are using, for the first time, some new uh, video equipment and uh, communication equipment. So we're hoping everything works well. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Adams. Here. Councilmember Bale. Here. Councilmember Curran. Here. Councilmember Dewar. Here. Councilmember Schwartz. Here. Vice Mayor Garcia. Here. Mayor Stone. Here. This time I'll turn it over to Councilmember Adams for the pledge. <laughs> Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd also like to take just a moment to recognize that yesterday was uh, National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, and uh, we've got a lot to be thankful for here thankful for here in Beaver Creek. We've got some great officers, dispatchers, and uh, civilian groups that work over there, and they, they take care of us every day. But in that same vein, I took a moment to look at the Officer Down Memorial page today, and we lost 500 officers last year uh, through several either line of duty uh, incidents. Uh, the bulk of them were uh, COVID. Uh, I think well over 300 of them were COVID. Uh, the average age of the officers was 48, and the average number of tour of duty was 17 years and 10 months. That's a lot of uh, experience that goes away with that. Uh, we're entering into the third year of COVID. Uh, I didn't know that we'd ever say that, but we are. Uh, so I'd like to take just a moment of silence, if we would, for the, to remember the police officers that lost their lives, the other people that have lost their lives from COVID, and those families that they left behind. Thank you. All right, we have an agenda before us this evening. Any changes? Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Submit it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Uh, we have a set of minutes from the December 13th regular meeting. Any corrections? I have a motion. Move to approve the minutes from December 13th. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from December 13th as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Abstentions. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is a public hearing, Z21-2. Case number Z21-2, an application filed by Alan Cummings, 2288 Grange Hall Road, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45431. The application requests the rezoning of four acres from C, PUD, Commercial Planned Unit Development to B4, Highway Business District. The property is located to the south and east of 3415 CJ Drive, further described as Book 5, Page 7, Part of Parcel 2 on the Greene County Property Tax Atlas. Ordinance number 22-2, an ordinance amending the zoning map by rezoning approximately 4.2 acres of land described as Book 5, Page 7, Part of Parcel 2 from CPUD Commercial Planned Unit Development to B4 Highway Business. Thank you. Mr. Cummings, would you have a presentation for Council? Good evening. Y'all need a na name and address, please. Yes, sir. Good evening. This is Al. I don't think that's yeah. on. It's on. It's Good on. evening. This is Alan Cummings, HRI Commercial Realty. I live at 2288 Grange Hall Road. I work there. I live at 2669 <laughs> Greenside Drive in Beaver Creek. I'm here tonight representing Lamont Group Lamont, a company in uh, Florida, which has purchased. Uh, which is in the midst of selling some land to SVG Motors, the four plus acres that was mentioned earlier, to add to their uh, auto lot, if you will, and their activities. Um, 
They've had the property about four years, three years rather, and bought it. Uh, you may recall it was in a little bit of a distressed condition, and they're in the midst of bringing it up. I think that has happened. We've had uh, we've had about five vacancies out of the 17 or 18 places that are there, and we we're trying to uh, get it completely filled. In any event, there were 11 plus acres in that in that uh, purchase that they made three years ago, uh, and they are willing to sell off uh, four acres, which has uh, been purchased by SVG, or is in the midst of, it's under contract, I should say, it's in the midst of being purchased by SVG Motors. As the clerk uh, indicated, and it was on your agenda, it's currently a commercial PUD, piece of property, and it needs to be zoned com compatible with uh, the rest of uh, SVG's motors, which is a B4 neighborhood business. Uh, so I'm here to um, state that I'm asking you for your support in doing that. It makes those two pieces of property compatible. It gives SVG an opportunity to expand a growing uh, automobile dealership and uh, I think they've done, they've sunk quite a bit of money into that property and have uh, made it a pretty decent looking compared with what it had been for many years. So uh, with that, uh, I'll sit down and you can hear the case from the staff. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Good evening, Mayor, members Good of the evening. City, city Council. The case you have before you is uh, Z21-2. Again, it's the Beaver Valley Shopping Center rezoning. Uh, the applicants looking to rezone a little over four acres from a, an older PUD that was uh, the city inherited when we incorporated back in 1980. Uh, it was a PUD B519, um, and they're looking to rezone that to a B4, again, for the expansion of the SVG Motors, which is just north of it. This property is located uh, on the south side of 35, just west of where 35 and North Fairfield Road intersect. Um, you can see, um, as the applicant was stating, it's about 11, a little over 11 acres in the property currently. Um, and what they're looking to do is rezone the area that I've got highlighted here in yellow and also with the red hash marks here. Um, uh, it's got frontage on CJ Drive. Um, this triangular piece is actually being uh, currently leased out by SVG Motors, but they're looking to purchase that as well as the um, older parking lot that's here to the south and then this, this vacant area, which was a, a, a movie theater back uh, many years ago. And there's also some of uh, the old parking lot uh, uh, that's fall fallen in disrepair that's, that was behind the, the movie theater that uh, is also in need of some renovation. Um, again, the property is uh, currently part of this PUD. Uh, to the north is the B4, and that's what they're looking to combine it with um, and to make it one unifying lot. And we were, we were looking at it. Um, we didn't want to have it to where right down the center of this parking or this drive aisle, um, you know, there's, there's certain uses here. And then, you know, right now there's a landscape area. And, and um, you know, when this all... Uh, goes as one unified development. We want to have to delineate, okay, this portion is B3 and this portion is B4. And, and um, you know, there's some slight differences in uses, particularly the uh, uh, recreational trails or recreational vehicle sales. Um, that's a, a conditional use in B4, but it's not permitted in B3. So we didn't want to have that, that um, you know, imaginary or that invisible line out there where we say, well, okay, trailers can't go past this line and, and can be north of this line, and we're out there trying to prove where the line is, you know, where the trailers are or anything. So we wanted to have it all one unifying uh, zoning district. Again, here's the uh, little over four acres that we're in the discussion this evening. Um, it's on the land use plan. It's community, commercial, and office, and, um, you know, that's compatible with the B4 uh, zoning requests. Also, you can see the cross hash lines here. That denotes that it's part of a plan development area, uh, overlay district on the land use plan. Um, and so what that acts as is similar to the specific site plan of a PUD. Any new building um, would have to go through the ASRA process. So it would go through Planning Commission and City Council for uh, architectural and site plan review. 
Um, also wanted to point out um, there is now, but the, you know, it will be, be highlighted uh, particularly if they, when they go th if they go through the conditional use process, which they've actually applied for and it's going to take um, the current SVG motors as well as this four plus acres through the conditional use process. They're under that. Uh, they just began that process, so they're going to go to planning commission actually in February for that. But they'll be required to have a 50-foot buffer here. So um, right now, again, it's that old parking lot uh, that's in a state of disrepair. So with that conditional use, we can require them to put landscaping there. If there's any uh, stormwater detention required, that's, this is the, the, the most likely place that it will occur. Um, and also, we can require additional screening, uh, landscaping screening along that, that border there to help protect the residential properties to the west. Um, again, this, is, uh, this shows that 50-foot buffer area in red. Um, this is the, uh, the recreational center. I think the Woodhaven Pool and Recreational Center, and then there's some residential properties here. Um, this is the theater as it was, and you can see the uh, parking lot to the south of that. Um, so Planning Commission, we took it to Planning Commission. They recommend approval. Staff has recommended approval. The applicants request, and I'll be here to answer any questions following the public hearing. Thanks. And thank you. All right, this is a public hearing, so is there anyone present this evening that would like to uh, address council on this application? If there is, please come forward. Seeing none, we will close the public input section. Now it is council time. So we can start. Uh, who wants to start? Charles, would you? Uh, council Member Curran, I'm, excuse me, sir. Would you like to start any comments on this one? I don't have anything on hand, Your Honor. All righty. Uh, council Member Garcia? Schwartz. Schwartz. I'm sorry. That's okay. We got a lot of names mixed oh, up going on here. <laughs> um, I do just have one simple question, Randy. When we were, and you may have explained this and perhaps I just missed it, when you were taking into consideration what we wanted to zone this as, why did we favor the B4 over just p making the whole thing a commercial PUD and converting that dealership to a CPUD? Yeah, it was based on the applicant's desire to uh, keep their, uh, their current property zone B4 and then just incorporate this. You know, th that was something we, th we considered, but because of most of the uses uh, that may be, you know, less than desirable next to residential, First, they can already happen on the, the uh, four plus acres that they currently own, but it's also many of those uses are conditional uses in the uh, B4 district, so they would have to come through the conditional use process at Planning Commission and then couple that with the ASRA overlay requirement. So it really it, it acts as a de facto PUD with m many of the uses, the conditional and then the, the ASRA requirement. Um, so it was it, based on the applicant's request to go through the, you know, do the B4, you know, we didn't didn't see a concern there with the uh, overlaying protections. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Council Member Adams. Well, the only question I have is how are they going to delineate the differences there between, like, Wings parking lot and uh, that driveway? I know there's a lot of uh, one of those uh, concrete stops all over that parking lot, and are they going to have more of those, or how is that going to be working? You know, we, we got the conditional use application, and I haven't got a chance to review it, but uh, there's a currently a, a, a chain link fence that goes between this property and the property to the uh, their property. Right over there, but in the parking lot area, it's not. And so. my presumption is that they're going to want to delineate that, you know, protect the, the rear, what is going to be the rear portion of their lot with another fence. Um, sure. and we don't allow fences to be chain linked in, in commercials, so any new fence will have to meet, you know, either wood or... or um, uh, other non chain link material, you know, wood or picket or something like that, uh, decorative aluminum or something. Um, so th there's not going to be any requirement for them to delineate that, but um, when they bring it through, you know, they're going to want to upgrade their parking lot to begin with, and, and any expansion of the parking lot is going to be new pavement. You're going to see the difference, but they're looking to purchase right at that. There's a line of those parking lot islands, so it's going to be everything north of that. Yeah, because I, I, I hope they do something right because it's, uh, 
it doesn't look good back there now. So they're not going to want people who you know patron the, the shopping center to park in their parking. No, I agree. I agree. So, so it would be, their, be in their best so. interest to okay. uh, interest to delineate that with some sort of barrier. Okay, that's all I had. Council Member Dura. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to say it's always exciting when an existing business in Beaver Creek is expanding. I thank you for working with them. Um, I guess a simple question to Dot and I and cross a T, but with the use of the, the B4 zone, it is for um, vehicle sales, in particular recreational vehicles uh, that be used by SVG Motors? Correct. Yep. Um, given the shape of this parcel, I did some driving down Kiswick as well as Napanee, but we also have Bob Evans, Woodhaven. We have a number of different patrons. Any feedback, any concerns at this stage from any of those folks? When we, went, uh, when we took this to Planning Commission, we had a few of the neighbors actually come in and speak at the Planning Commission meeting, and their, their biggest concern is, um, I guess, apparently, at times, people will leave the radio on in the inside of the uh, service center back there, and it, and it makes loud noise at night. So they're they're asking to, uh, you know, have that taken care of. And the good thing about going through the conditional use of, uh, stage is, right now, noise with a straight rezoning like this, noise is just a police matter. And so they have to call the police and you know come out and, and deal with it on a time basis. You know, it's after 11 o'clock. But with a conditional use, we can add a condition that no external noise should be heard at the boundary line after 8 p.m. And, and that also makes it a zoning issue as well. So we will be able to hit them both on both, both, both police and the zoning violation if they do that. Appreciate you thinking ahead with that and with the uh, buffer area as well. I think those are gonna be important for the residents, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Bales. Thank you. I don't think I have any issue with the rezoning itself. I think just the um, conditional use plan uh, will be uh, something I'd like to look closely at. Um, do you know if they've indicated the desire to pave the place where the theater was? Again, again, I'll have to look at that application. I haven't, I haven't looked at it like I, I should, but we, yeah, planning commission is still another couple of weeks away, so that we're kind of taking these steps as we go, but uh, um, we're working on the uh, the lot split right now, so that's kind of what we've been focusing on on this property, trying to get that lot separated so they can actually buy it and then we can combine it with that future lot. But um, I can certainly get you a copy of what we have, um, you know, relatively quick. I can get it to you this evening. Well, I think that we're probably all very interested to hear what their ideas are for the expansion. Um, I echo Council Member Adams' concern about the delineation of the parking lot mm -hmm. uh, compared to the existing parking lot, and also um, the current uh, their current chain link fence and so forth. Right now, you know, the perception is that's kind of behind the building, and it has a tendency to gather some parked cars and maybe some auto part remnants and so forth. And so, I just would hate to see that trickle into the other. Um, parking lot closer to the retail sure um, and so again it kind of goes with that conditional use I, I think that that gives you a great opportunity to put those down on paper to make sure that the whole site is clean and tidy and so forth but okay. as far as the rezoning goes um, I'm in favor. I just also wanted to clarify that the conditional use uh, just uh, it, it's only a planning commission so it won't come to the City Council I just wanted right. to make sure okay no, I, I get that, but it gives okay. you an opportunity. Sure, I'm, and, I'm giving you my and thoughts. You, and so your feedback is it will be duly noted when we go to the applicant with our comments on the conditional use yeah. approval. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you. I just have one quick question. You mentioned, and I may have missed it if it was in the writing somewhere, that you would, I think you said you would encourage them to make sure that they would put more landscaping in that 50 foot buffer. Is that what you said? Did, is that something that we can require, or is that more just an encouragement that we hope that they do? Well, they'll have to follow the minimum buffer requirements that are laid out in the zoning code and then we can add as part of that conditional use process um, we can add we okay. can add a condition that you know in order to keep the sanctity of the neighborhood to the west and south they'll have to add additional landscaping um, and if they if they ever wanted to put a building on this area then they'd have to go through the ASRA and then that's when we can add conditions and even more landscaping if necessary yeah great thank you that was the one question I had is making sure it's more of a 
I don't want to say mandate, but I guess the word is mandate as opposed to just an encouragement to have that landscaping there. Because I understand the 50 foot setback rule, but that landscaping would be nice as well. So that's it for me. Okay. All right. So, so we, we know the Planning Commission hears the conditional use. Who hears the ASRA? If uh, the, an ASRA would be, that would be applicable if a new building goes, but that would go to Planning Commission for recommendation and then City Council would make the ultimate decision on approval or disapproval. So without a building, there's no ASRA? There's no ASRA without a new building. Okay. Well, I, I for one, I'm, uh, I, I believe it all should be in a PUD. Uh, all the things that we're talking about conditionally are things that are supposed to be, I mean, that's what a PUD is for, in my opinion and that's to be able to establish these conditions. Uh, conditional use, the problem I have with straight zoning is that now you have absolutely no control over some other user that qualifies for B4. This conditional use would only be for SVG's trailer sales, right? Correct. Okay, so now that you have, you have this lar much larger piece of B4 property, which is not neighborhood business, it is highway business zoning, uh, and with res two residential properties right behind it. Uh, so I, the staff's aware, and uh, you know, and that I, I, staff is doing what they think is best, and that I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I do not have any concern about an expansion for SVG and putting the uh, rec RV sales over there. I just have, and my concern is what, once you zone it B4, it is B4. It will never be anything less. You cannot say that it cannot be used for all these other things that are already in B4, which is what we do under a PUD. We may say, okay, yeah, it can be B4, but we're going to say, okay, you cannot have this or you cannot have that. Uh, so I'm just a little leery about the future, not so much tomorrow, but about the future when you create another large parcel of B4. Uh, so I am i haven't made up my mind, but that is my gut at this point, that, uh, uh, that I think the process should be under a PUD. Because we're not going to see it again. Okay. Any other comments? Anybody want to reply to my comment? Uh, I, would, I would like to comment. Yeah. And just clarity. Um, can you... Mayor Stone brings up a good point. Um, and, and can you tell me if you have indeed had conversations with SVG on whether they would consider... Uh, PUD. I mean, to be honest, the the initial conversation was between the city planner and, and the applicant, and so I'm I'm going. I, I didn't have the direct conversation. I'm I'm going off of what I've talked to with Sandra about this, and so I asked her why aren't we going PUD, and she said that's not what they wanted to do. And and at first I was I you know was wondering why they weren't going PUD, but then after thinking about it with the conditional use and uh, ASRA, you know, it's kind of the, the, the roundabout way of getting to the PUD. Uh, there are a lot of conditional uses in the B4, and so any one of those uses, they would still have to go through the conditional use process. Like if, if a different conditional use moved in, then it would be a whole new conditional use process. Um, not, not if another auto dealer moved in, but if, if a different use other than what was approved conditionally would have to go come back to the Planning Commission for a new conditional use approval. Okay. I, I, w I would suggest that in the, between this reading and the next that you review the uses, permitted uses and before. Because yes, some of them are conditional, but there's a whole lot that are just standard uses that uh, require no re uh, requirements from the city or no input from the city. So, <clears throat> all right, anyone else? All right, does anyone have a motion? Mr. Mayor, given Councilmember Bales' question that was raised, would it be appropriate to see if this could be tabled to have a further conversation with the applicant about having that conversation, or is that not 
direction that council would like to take tonight? Well, it's it's not inappropriate. So I mean, whatever motion is made is made, and we will. But it's certainly not inappropriate. I'm not. At least I'm not aware. We'll ask staff, or we'll ask Mr. Yeah. Cummings if there's any absolute urgency uh, that there any either party's aware of. Come up to the mic, please. You, we, I ask you a question, so you can come up to the mic. Well, I don't think there is a sense of urgency, and if you wanted to table it, I don't think that would be a problem. But uh, I would say, uh, I would say we did what the city told us to do. So here we get here and find that you're challenging that. So, yeah. okay. Thanks. So, so where's the fairness here? <laughs> well, there's not going to be a decision tonight anyway. I mean, this just goes on to the second reading, even if it's approved. <clears throat> All right, do Mr. I hear, Mayor, do may I hear a motion? May, may I just suggest that th there's two weeks between now and the, and the next reading to give staff time to, to research and, and find out. So, I mean, with that said, I mean, I, I move to uh, move ordinance 22-02 to a second reading. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to move ordinance 22-02 on to the second reading. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries, thank you. Again, I just encourage us all to do our do our homework between now and two weeks from now. All right, next, ordinance of resolutions and PUDs. First is ordinance 22-01. Ordinance number 22-01 to approve supplemental appropriations and certify additional revenue for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022 and ending December 31, 2022 and to amend ordinance 2126. Thank you. Sir. Good evening, uh, Mayor and members of uh, City Council. Happy new fiscal year. Uh, we're uh, starting off with a uh, bang already. Uh, what you have before you is a uh, additional or supplemental appropriations and to certify some revenue uh, in uh, 2021. Maybe you'll recall that we had in the budget to buy the 100 acres of Research Park uh, land uh, for a, a million dollars uh, utilizing uh, fees paid by developers and two grants. And uh, the grants were from the uh, Ohio Department of Natural uh, Resources for 50% or half a million dollars. And the other uh, part of the grant was a $40,000 grant from uh, Green County for Economic Development. Uh, when we were doing the 2022 budget, we thought that the purchase would be done and the reimbursement grant would be uh, applied and that would all be done in the fiscal year 2021. It turned out that there was some delays on that uh, and we still haven't actually closed on it yet. So what we need to do is rebudget the million dollars plus some closing costs and certify the revenue in the 2022 budget. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Anyone? Motion? I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-01. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Curran? Yes. Councilmember Hewitt? Yes. Councilmember Schultz? Yes. Vice Mayor Garcia? Yes. Councilmember Vail? Yes. Councilmember Adams? Yes. And Mayor Schultz? Yes. Next is resolution 22-01. Resolution number 22-01, a resolution authorizing the city manager or his designee, the financial administrative services director, to request advanced draws upon the amounts collected by the Greene County Auditor for the City of Beaver Creek 2021 real estate 
and personal property taxes collected during calendar year 2022. Thank you. Uh, keeping, there, with, you're on again, I guess. keeping with our uh, theme for the new fiscal year, uh, this is something we do uh, annually, usually the first meeting. Uh, the bottom line is the uh, county auditor collects property taxes uh, throughout the year. And uh, theoretically in the ORC it says he's supposed to distribute those in March and August. Uh, they do allow us to pass this resolution that allows him to send the money earlier than those two draws uh, in advance of uh, those two specific dates. And uh, so we put forward this resolution to instruct him that we will accept our money at the soonest possible uh, time frame. So All happy right. to answer any questions. You're going to ask real nicely, right? <laughs> real nice of them. Oh, and I might add, so uh, last year we received seven of those advances uh, almost to the tune of $15 million. So again, we're getting the benefit of, you know, 0.1% uh, interest on those funds for uh, 30 or 60 days, so. All right. Any other comments from council? Do I hear a motion? Move to approve resolution 2201. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-01. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries, thank you. Next is Resolution 22-02. Resolution 22-02, a resolution authorizing submission of an application for the Greene County Council on Aging, Transportation, and Senior Center Services Grant Funding. Thank you. Well, Tyler, you're making this a habit, aren't you? I mean, weren't you here at the last meeting of last year? <laughs> Good thing, right? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Absolutely. Vice Mayor, City Council members. Pleasure to be before you tonight. Again, this resolution is for a transportation and senior center services grant. Uh, the Greene County Council on Aging provides annual funding opportunity to Greene County Senior Centers um, for transportation and senior center services. Um, these funds can be used for building operation and maintenance, um, general operation and personnel, programming, and capital purchases. Uh, the Parks Department is seeking to permission to apply for this grant with an expected deadline of February 11th, 2022. Uh, this grant would support Beaver Creek Senior Center operations and typically accounts for nearly half of our operating budget. Um, so the city would apply for $241,919 in grant money with no match funds required. Mm -hmm. and staff is recommending the adoption of this resolution. Well, thank you. Any questions or comments? Is any of that going for a vehicle, or is it? Are we in the That'll market? That'll be a, yet? a separate grant. Separate, but we will okay. see that this year. Very good. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve motion to approve resolution 22-02. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-02. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving right along. We've got council time. How about we start on my far right and council member Bales. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be quick. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone and our entire community. Uh, really, the only thing I want to say, and it kind of goes hand in hand with council member Adams' prayer, is that uh, you know we have seen a tremendous influx in COVID cases um, in the community and uh, you know, with the new variants out there. So I guess I just wanna encourage everybody to be safe and socially distance where they can and, and be as healthy as possible this new year. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Dewar. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have the privilege of announcing um, 11 City of Beaver Creek employee anniversaries uh, in this month of January, 2022. We have Andy Amberm, um, Amberm from the Golf Club for 17 years, Laurie McIntosh from Finance for six, Sean Sumner from Police, 30 years, Karen Mahaffey from the Police, 11 years, Donald Cole from the Police, 27 years, uh, Greg Weissert from the Police, 14 years, uh, Sarah DeBoard from the Police, eight years, Emilio uh, Balag, um, Belager uh, from Public Service, 13 years. Clayton Campbell, uh, Public Service from 13 years. 
uh, Kevin Vance, uh, public service for 13 years, and Tyler Barlaghi for senior center two years. Uh, so thank you all for your wonderful service to our city. Uh, really amazing to see these, uh, the number of years of service and uh, welcoming some, uh, some newer folks and hope you can stay for, for many years. Uh, I don't have a, a lot to add today, uh, but I did have the opportunity uh, to attend my uh, son's Lego League uh, competition, uh, and it really is quite an amazing um, initiative within City of Beaver Creek Schools. I, I was blown away by what they're already doing in, in uh, the early grades, uh, and it really is a, a fine point for our community. And a big thank you to all the parents and volunteers out there. Uh, that give so, um, so so much of their time um, so selflessly. So a big thank you uh, across sports and, and various extra and co-curricular activities. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And just on the continuation, of, um, how, how it got left off the list, I don't know. But Chief, would you stand and be recognized, please? Uh, <laughs> Chief Fiorita, 30 years. Congratulations, sir. All right. How about uh, Council Member Adams, please? I'm not used to doing this in the middle. I'm not <laughs> used to calling it in the middle either. Well, first of all, I hope everyone had a great holiday and had a chance to spend some, some quality time with their uh, families. Uh, since the last meeting, I've spent a lot of time with mine, and uh, there are some other commitments, but I did find uh, time to do a few things. I mentioned this in the last meeting. We did the Rotary Club with uh, giving out the... Uh, food and gifts to the needy families in Beaver Creek. That was, that was a great, uh, great opportunity to serve some people. Uh, also was able to attend the 118th anniversary of the powered flight of, uh, at the Wright Brothers uh, Memorial and uh, Mayor Stone was out of town so I filled in for him there. Uh, I attended the winter welcome at Wardinger Park. Again, the Parks Department did an outstanding job. Uh, it rained all day but uh, still a lot of people showed up so it was uh, and I know Kiwanis was out there and uh, Optimus and pretty much everybody was out there. So it was, it was a good, uh, good opportunity to get out there and see some things. <coughs> also attended uh, the Bears for Children assembly at uh, Care Bears or whatever they call it at the mall uh, and had an opportunity to put together a, uh, a bear to be given to one of the children at uh, Children's uh, over the holidays. Uh, and it's amazing what they go through to do that. You not only have to make the bear, you have to st start the heart and do all of these things and you name it. And it's just, it's a, really it's a neat opportunity uh, to be involved. And this was actually started by the kids in uh, the Beaver Creek schools back in 2008. That first year they did 12 bears and then uh, Callista Hess who is a member of our, or used to be a member of our Beaver Creek Youth Council has now moved on to right state she still chairs that and this year and she did uh, 695 bears uh, through donations from people and just people stopping by and dropping off money making a bear and turning it in so I think that's a great uh, activity for them then Callista and Callie's just done an outstanding <coughs> job with that and if Finally, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, the Beaver Creek High School Show Choir Friends is going to be holding their annual Midwest Show Choir Classic. Uh, it's going to be at the high school in the auditorium. I'll be there. I'm running the stage again backstage for the 14th year. Uh, I'm starting to think I'm too old for this, but uh, it's going to be a long weekend, but it's well worth it. If you get an opportunity on Saturday, come out and see some of those high schools perform. There's a lot of talented kids in our schools today. Uh, is, and they work really, really hard at that. So uh, I won't see you, but try to stop out. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, very good. Council Member Schwartz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, too, got to attend uh, the Wardinger Winter Welcome and handed out some cookies and hot cocoa. And much like, oh, this is going to be hard, Council Member Adams, um, I was so shocked at the turnout with all of the rain. It was so great, and so I was glad to see everyone out and about, and I wanted to congratulate the Beaver Creek Historical Society. They got the most votes this year. Kiwanis, once again, was in second, so I'm not sure if we need to either up our game or if I just need to join a different organization. I haven't decided yet. Um, I also wanted to thank Mayor Stone and Mike Zwick for inviting me to Rotary this Friday, this past Friday. 
Um, I had the pleasure of hearing Pete give his State of the City a much abbreviated version than what we got last meeting, um, and he did wonderful. And so it was, a, it was a pleasure to be there, and I just wanted to thank Mayor for that. Um, last and certainly not least, um, I did want to hit on what Council Member Adams said earlier today. Yesterday was Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, and you know, not only yesterday or today, but every day we do appreciate the officers in this community and all of our surrounding communities. <coughs> the sacrifices that they make do not go unnoticed, and so we are just so very thankful. So thank you. Thank That's you. All. Thank you, Mayor. Very true. Uh, Council Member Curran. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I had the opportunity <coughs> to attend the Warding and Park ac activity. And uh, it was really neat to see all the people come out, even though the weather has already been mentioned by other members of Council wasn't uh, exactly the best. But and congratulations to all the service clubs. <coughs> and as uh, member, uh, Council Member Schwartz mentioned, the uh, the Beaver Creek Historical Society for their leadership and uh, efforts to make that a success, even though the weather wasn't the best it could. Also, uh, thank uh, Pete for his uh, shortened presentation at Rotary. It was nice to uh, hear it again in a more abbreviated form. Really super, no? And uh, also, uh, just echoing what uh, Council Member Adams mentioned about the law enforcement community and the challenges that they face day in and day out. And, just to recognize again the efforts and sacrifice that they put forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Vice Mayor Garcia. You're Thank on. you very much. Well, Happy New Year. It's so good to see everybody. It feels like we were gone forever, but it's <coughs> nice to be back. I just want to give a few updates. I know we talk about Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission a lot and some of the benefits that they have for us. So the recent report uh, for 2020 benefits for our membership was an 11% return on our investment. So what that looks like is four million three hundred and twenty seven thousand eight hundred and fifty two dollars that we received uh, for four different federal transportation programs here in Beaver Creek so that's fantastic uh, one of the other things that MVRPC did for regional initiatives was to assist the member organizations which we are to secure more than forty three million dollars in federal funding to assist with the recovery from the May 2019 tornadoes so for our, for our city for Beaver Creek we had 1,040 total properties that a qualified for this recovery and of that we have more than 97 percent that recovered based on this initiative with only 28 properties still in progress to get their recovery so that is fantastic news uh, 2019 feels like so long ago but for so many of our residents it is still a problem to recover from these tornadoes so it's really great to have MVRPC helping with that but otherwise um, happy new year to everyone and good to see everybody back all right thank you and I agree, I'm gonna say Happy New Year one more time. It's gonna be, uh, I think it'll be a good year for the city. And so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, all the comments you've heard from the council members, it's been a uh, very rewarding holiday season and uh, everybody was out enjoying themselves and enjoying the community, watching the community enjoy themselves as well. Uh, I have one comment to make about myself and that is that I am officially now appointed to the uh, Board of Directors for the Ohio Mayor's Alliance, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is the uh, 30 largest cities in the state of Ohio. So uh, I just somehow can't say no when somebody mm -hmm. asks. But if uh, so, if you have anything that you any messages you'd like to get to the uh, to the Ohio Mayor's Alliance, please let me know. Uh, with that, I want to uh, once again say Happy New Year, and uh, nobody fell asleep during. Uh, the city manager's <laughs> presentation at Rotary. So I give him a round of applause for that as well. But it, uh, so now you're on. <laughs> no state of the state now. No uh, state of the union. Right? Right. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, it was my pleasure. Actually, Thursday morning, I uh, did the abbreviated version uh, to the Optimist Club as well. I was invited uh, there and then Rotary followed up uh, on Friday. So. Uh, I had a little practice on keeping it short, um, <coughs> but uh, it was a great opportunity and my honor to uh, present. Um, just a few things real quick tonight. Uh, Beaver Creek Television, as we have said, you might notice uh, a little different uh, on the video equipment that we have. The city's new cable access channel is on the air. Uh, it's been replaced uh, by outdated and falling apart equipment. Uh, but residents can watch on Spectrum Channel 5 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. And 
it's still standard definition, although we are recording in high def, and you'll see on YouTube high def when it goes out. But on, uh, along Channel 5, even if you have high def TV, you're going to see it in standard uh, definition, at least for this uh, period of time going forward. Um, but the live stream on our beavercreekohio.gov, and we have a direct link to uh, Beaver Creek Television. Uh, you click on that, and you can actually live stream it. It's about a 30-second delay, but uh, it's it's high def. So if you just have don't have uh, one of the cable channels, uh, you can actually still watch Channel uh, 5, so to speak, access channel on uh, your computer. Uh, so the, check that out. And uh, city council, planning commission, park board meetings, all that's being, it will be live and recordings of the meeting will also run through uh, the month. Just keep in mind though, we have basically rebooted the uh, cable access channel 5. All the programmings, everything we are trying to work with on learning with the new equipment and then what do we want to be airing and showing and what can we uh, and so forth. So please uh, patience as we build, uh, rebuild the station. Uh, but it should be fun and it's going to be a lot of, a lot of work but hopefully very beneficial to residents. And uh, you know, um, if you have any announcements, I will say uh, that are from nonprofit, non-political, and non-religious organizations. Cable at BeaverCreekOhio.gov. Cable at BeaverCreekOhio.gov. We'll be glad to show that uh, on our cable access channel. And uh, just uh, now that Happy New Year, uh, remember CI Beaver Hall and shelter re reservations are now taking place. So if you know you have a family reunion, you know you have a wedding, you know you have a class reunion, whatever it may be, now is the time. Uh, CI Beaver Hall is a good place that has a kitchen, a large great room, full kitchen, beautiful park setting, uh, and shelter reservations also fill up very fast for peak season. So call the City of Beaver Creek Parks Division at 937-427-5514 or beavercreekohio.myrec.com to make a reservation. And uh, I told Katie, I hope we have to cancel this, but <laughs> she, there's a deadline for uh, do you want to build a snowman? My answer is no, but a lot of kids, uh, including my granddaughter, may want to build a snowman, and she may grab Grandpa to get out there and help. Uh, but with that, uh, right now we are, if you build a snowman, if we get that between now and February 22nd is when voting happens. So prior to that, if we get some snow, build a snowman, take a picture, and you can uh, uh, send it um, to uh, parks at beavercreekohio.gov, just like we did last night or last year. And they'll, people will like the different photos once we post it. And the one with the most likes will win the prize. And the family submitting the photo receives the most likes will win a family fun prize pack with full of goodies to enjoy together. So uh, there are some people hoping for snow. <laughs> and uh, last I want to say is uh, next uh, Monday, January 17th, City Hall and the Senior Center uh, will be closed in honor of Martin Luther King Day. If you need assistance, you can call the police department's non-emergency number at 426-1225. Uh, public services will be uh, operational that day. Uh, and that's all I have today. All right, thank you. All right, at this time, uh, the agenda calls for citizen comments. So if there's anyone present this evening that would like to address council on any issue at all, please come forward. Seeing none, we will move on to the next item, and the next item is executive session, and I believe Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to enter into executive session pursuant to Section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code for the purpose of consideration of the employment, dismissal, or compensation of a public employee, preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees. Thank you. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to enter into executive session. May we have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Garcia. Yes. Council Member Bales. Yes. Council Member Dewar. Yes. Council Member Adams. Yes. Council Member Schwartz. Yes. Council Member Curran. Yes. And Mayor Stone. Yes. And for the uh, for the record and for the public, uh, there will be no decision coming out of after the executive session. So the video portion of this meeting will uh, end. 
However, we will reconvene if anyone wishes to stay here. We'll be back. Thank you. We are in executive session then.